And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today, today, well, we're going to keep grinding out as many hatches and as many fish as we can. But we're finally going to get our power finished. We're all the way up here. They're actually putting in the last of the Atmo sensors. This is basically a bottomless Rodriguez, or a pantsless Rodriguez, whatever you want to call it. Actually, this isn't a Rodriguez at all. What am I saying? It's just a, a bottomless self-powered oxygen maker, I suppose. All it's really here to do is produce hydrogen. The oxygen we're just going to vent off into space. The oxygen, or the, uh, the oxygen we vent off into space, the hydrogen we're going to bring down here, and we're going to make ourselves a little power plant. This power plant should provide most of our needs for the foreseeable future. Well, if it would, if, if anyone would ever get started on it, and why are you injured? What happened to you that you got hurt? Uh, is someone swinging their claws about? No. Weird. How did you get injured then? As far as I can tell, there's no crabs about. Hmm. Oh, never mind. All right, we now have a uh, another fry egg in here. We're going to double down on over here and have two fish in that section. So that that should be a tame fry fry because well, it came out of all of these tame fish over here. Oh, and that reminds me, this thing here, when this thing gets an activation signal, which should be, well, ooh, let's just say, one percent of the time or 0.9 will do. That should send an activation signal to this thingy here, which should tell me, feed the fish. Yeah, I know, I shouldn't uh, be using that. And we'll go with pop, boing boing, boing boing it is. There we go, perfect. And uh, what are the fish at? They are actually at 91 seconds. You know what, I think I'm going to feed them now and we'll come back to that in like, another cycle. Due to there not being enough polluted water to keep this fish in that tile, we had to lower this down one, which has sort of messed up our auto sweeper. Our auto sweeper was originally able to reach that tile to whisk out all the eggs that appeared. In fact, we've got our first egg over here, of course. Uh, but now that it's been moved down a tile, it's, it's messed up the whole system. So we'll just put another auto sweeper there, which is only 200 kilos of aluminum we can't afford. Uh, how's our hatches doing over here? Hmm, we're missing one egg. Has anyone laid any... You know what? We need more incubators. Where are we going to put the extra incubators? Dear Lord. Just the amount of incubators we need is starting to get a little bit out of control. No, they finished up here. Excellent. No, no, I'm going to put in the incubators first, then I'll worry about it. I'm thinking a couple of incubators over here couldn't hurt too much. Yeah, we could fit in two. Yeah, we can fit in two over here. Yeah, that looks about right. We'll have to stick in some automation to go with them, and we're probably going to have to run them off our main grid, which I really don't like doing, but needs must. Okay, that will take us up to a reasonable amount of incubators, though we're probably going to need more, aren't we? The construction projects are taking far longer than I would have hoped, so I'm thinking we make some changes here. Actually, let's downgrade those priorities to one on all of those, but then leave the deconstruction commands at five. Uh, the reason for this is we don't want... Well, we don't need that much food anymore. We're producing enough meat that it's subsidizing our, uh, our food supplies, so we don't need this much... Well, raw labor going into the planter boxes. We've already got 87,000 calories of pickled meal. Don't get me wrong, it's a great stopgap measure that we've been using, but it's time to maybe wean ourselves off the labor requirements. Well, we were about to get started up there. Well, we were about to finish this off, then we have to finish this off, then we have to start the power brick, but it's time to feed the fish again. Oh, and no one's gotten around to the auto sweeper. Seriously, guys? Yeah, they will in a minute. Fish have been happily fed. It'll be another cycle before we have to come back and do that. That one's wild, this one 3% wildness, that one actually tamed, that one's already tamed as well and reproducing, and that one is tamed and reproducing, and finally, that one is also reproducing. How many eggs have up there? Just one, but soon we're going to have a bunch more. Those fish reproduce at an incredible rate, that's going to make life so much simpler for us. Over on Contrilia, or whatever, it, whatever it's called, we're just excavating out the area, freeing up more resources and seeing more of what's in here. And there's a lot. Ooh, and there's even more bugs over there. We should probably access those so that they don't become cramped. Yeah, let's just put, like, a little something down there and maybe keep that digging across. Perfect. We're also doing something a little similar this other side. Eh, whatever they get around to first, I don't mind. They've got 22,000 calories. That pickled meal is sort of really working out for us. Oh, reminds me, I never renamed this dupe. Uh, let me think. I think I mean random number generator. Okay, Alex Riley, welcome to the team. You are the defrost friend who has been, well, just sort of roped into doing all the random stuff around this place. Oh, we finally got one of those spindle grub fruits. In that case, we can 
uproot that one and replace it with a spindle grub fruit. You copy. Uh, can, no, we can't apply the setting until that other plant is gone. They'll get around to it in a minute. No rush whatsoever. Now back here, we're finally getting the incubators up and running. Oh, I'm gonna have to find a place for those eggs, but I think the moment those poke shells step out of line, it's gonna be like everyone gangs up on them. It's gonna be children of the corn versus the crab people. All right, uh, this. Yes, finish this off real quick if you wouldn't mind. And why did you jump in there? It's literally just a one tile gap. Just, just, just jump across it. You'll be fine. Ooh, three fry eggs already. Ooh, hell's yeah. Oh, and that fish should have already been placed down here. We should have a paku fry in there. Yes, we do. And they are already tame. Nice. In that case, we will make this one the next one up. This means we'll have two here, two here, two here, and this will bring us two here, which is a nice even number in what I plan to do until I put four of them there accidentally. All right, one more paku fry. Actually, let's see if there's anything else. There's no stone hatchlings or regular hatchlings. One more fry egg, and then... Didn't look that up. Once the fry egg is in there, we'll uh, switch that over to some other egg-laying stuff. And what do we got down here? Yeah, you can hold out. We've, st we've got 14 pip eggs lying around the place. How? Well, they'll make wonderful barbecue. While we're waiting on those incubators to finish, we've got a blueprint. Oh, coal. Excellent. We've got loads of that stuff, I'd say, by now. I haven't actually checked our coal supplies. Well, there's some interesting ones. We've got starry-eyed. This is one of the newer traits. This duplicant loves being in space, plus 10 morale when in outer space. I presume that's on a ship somewhere. That'd be very handy. Unfortunately, they've got farming and tidying as a bonus on top of that, which... Yeah, we don't need them. Rocketry, supplying, suit-wearing... Not really too bothered, to be honest, and whatever, farming, don't care, we'll just take the coal. Oh, there have been concer some concerns that we won't have enough time to eat all the calories necessary to get the, uh, where is it? Ah, yes, the carnivore achievement. Uh, people are worried that we won't be able to eat all the calories fast enough. Well, no, that's that's no worries at all. you got to remember, we have nine colonists who eat 2,000 calories per cycle. 2,000 calories. Try and wrap your head around that for a minute. That means, say, 10 of them would eat 20,000 calories per cycle. Which means in 40 cycles, it'd be laid to full 400,000. Which is kind of mental. But we've already got a bunch of calories consumed, as you can see yourselves. So what were we up to again? Ah, yes, we've got 55,000 calories. Ooh, still might want to start eating, though, might we? No, 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 no. I'll hold that until we've actually beefed up a bit more. The thing is, we can always uh, cram down more calories if needs be. What we can do is just get the uh, binge eaters to just start chugging stuff down. As in, stress them out until they go crazy and start, uh, well, eating too much. That way, it still counts towards the uh, the achievement, and we can basically force them to eat way more calories than they need. Okay, and are we almost done here? Yes, thank you. Hey, stone hatch and regular hatch. We'll leave you for the time being. We don't need this space, it seems. Okay, you. Is that egg lullaby? Yes, it is. That means this one should be done shortly. And we've already got two fry eggs there. I think I think this is going to work out quite nicely. All right, with that done, I think it's time we can finally get started on power. We are going to make an actual power room with... Where are you? Oh, yeah, we need one of the stations. Ah, power control station. That only takes up two squares. Despite it having those uh, big arms on the side, they don't count for anything. Power-wise, we're going to be sticking in hydrogen generator, hydrogen generator, and... Hydrogen generator. This here is going to be our main power grid, so we're going to have to use heavy watt wire. That's unfortunate because it costs like a hundred per tile. That's like almost a ton of aluminum ore just went into that. That uh, that hurt. We might want to start chipping back copper ore from here. How much copper out do we actually get in this place? Uh, copper ore, we got 70 tons. I'm thinking... Yeah, I think we start sending some of that back home. We can't send it all back, but we should be able to send enough. At the moment, Brendan is still digging out a few areas, but I think they've got most of it done already, just a little bit left to do. So after this, I think, yes, copper ore is going to become more plentiful on this home asteroid. All right, but for now, get in the uh, the gas piping as well. Also, we're going to need to put in a battery here. This is going to be our, well, our power brick that's going to just sustain us for a while. We're going to harvest hydrogen from here, feed it into that, and then we're going to have a smart battery up here. We couldn't fit anything else into this room, namely because well, it's kind of a small room and we're, we're hemmed in by a slush geyser, but needs must. Anyway, we're going to put the uh, the smart battery up there because it won't fit inside here. Anyway, it's time to feed the fish, but I've made some changes here. I've switched them over to mealwood seeds. Now that they're all tamed, we can switch them over to seeds, and we've got about 90 of those seeds lying about the place. Where is it? Yeah. We, 
because of all of the farming we've been doing, we have a lot of mealwood seeds. So it only takes one third of a mealwood seed to keep them fed. We don't need to be, you know, messing around and doing anything too crazy. So we're just going to let them be fed all the time. So this can, well, just be switched off. We don't need it anymore. They'll do their thing and they'll keep dropping eggs. Oh, and over on Contralia over here, we're, uh, yeah, we're basically starting to call the local population to start getting this place moved over to meat. Namely because, well, we need them. We need them on meat. We need to start getting some calories. We've only got 25 cycles left to consume the necessary amount of calories and, oh, let them finish off that. And it's going to be a little bit difficult otherwise. You see, over here, we're only just starting to come into viability territory. Uh, let me try and explain it. For example, this ranch, seven critters. This ranch, seven critters. This ranch only has two, and this ranch only has... Oh, actually, this one's up to four. Damn, that one actually... Those two last I checked. All right, but we need three more here, and we need five more there. So we need seven more eggs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we have seven eggs in incubation, which means once those eggs are complete, we'll have all of our ranches full. But then, of course... Well, they're baby hatchlings. Baby hatchlings don't start reproducing until they hit the age of five. And then it'll take them six cycles to drop their first egg, which means it's going to be 11 cycles before any of these eggs can potentially drop any more eggs, or will actually produce any meat. And by then, that will be, oh, 86 cycles in? So we need to start producing meat now, but we can't really. We'll have a little bit of tiding over from the fish, so we may end up just having to stress out some binge eaters to survive this. I'm not sure. Also, we're running out of aluminum. Uh, we need to make more incubators, and the problem is, where's, did I just spend all of our aluminum? I think I may have just spent all of our aluminum. Nope, oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, we've got about two tons of this stuff left that we can utilize. Not a lot. Uh, yeah, oh well. Gotta do what you gotta do. So this is our basic power brick. We just gotta get the actual hydrogen flowing, so for that we're gonna need to hook up a water supply. And the water supply is now connected. Excellent. We're going to make you yeah, priority nine. I already did that. That's because if that sieve backs up, our toilets back up and our water will stop flowing, which will cut off water to our electrolyzer up here. Okay, there's that going. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to get this jumpstart this. Hmm. Mm, I also need to figure out how I'm going to actually feed power back onto it. You can use the large power transformer and done. This will be the power feeding back onto this. Namely because we're going to have to cut this off when the time comes. We'll hook it up to our main grid so that it starts generating hydrogen. But once the hydrogen is started to be generated, we can let it power itself. All right, hurry it up, people. We need that, uh, we need that power wire in quick. I think all the pieces are in place. We have water flowing up there. We have the power overlay ready to go. We have the gas overlay ready to go. So let's see what we forgot. All right, power's hooked up. We're probably going to get a few brown... Oh, damn it. I know what we forgot. We forgot the uh, power wire from there to there. That is awkward. Uh, okay, one second. I'll have to delete this power wire again. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We've prepared for stupidity. Uh, how are we looking on the gas front? Okay, yeah, it'll be a bit messy, but yeah, yeah, we got this. We'll sort it out. Now we're done. Uh, in that case, we will stop anyone from going in there anymore. We don't want them messing this up. Uh, Gas-wise, that actually looks really promising. And power-wise, you know what? We can do that. That is close enough. We can sever it there again when the time comes. Okay. That actually looks like it's working. Okay, hydrogen's going there, oxygen's going there. We just need to set this to, what was it? Is it 750? I want to say 750, but it might be less than that with this kind of setup. Ooh, say 450 might be more appropriate. Considering how quickly the oxygen is dissipating. Okay, there's going to be a little bit of oxygen there at first. But that's okay. As so long as there's no hydrogen escaping out the sides, I don't mind. That... Looks to be working. We're going to get some element damage. That was sort of to be anticipated at first. But yes, 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 the power will flow. And down it goes. That's that last piece of element damage, but... Yeah, after that... Okay, and we're getting overload damage already. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, deconstruct that, actually. Deconstruct that at an emergency priority. Don't want any more overloads. Actually, that power overload is going to sever it anyway. Done. All right, so this is now being powered entirely off this. 
Yes. Oh, this just solves right? This really makes our power problems a lot simpler. Though, not entirely. It turns out we've been a little bit behind on the hydrogen frontier and our hydrogen backed up. If that had got much worse, that hydrogen would have kept backing up into the system. And then we would have ended up with hydrogen getting pumped out our oxygen lines. I don't see any cases of that, so I think I caught it in time. But I was not paying attention. We just weren't burning enough power. I think it's when we stopped researching and we stopped using the rock crusher so much, we weren't burning as much power as we originally were. But now, now I think we'll be fine. We can start burning stuff like crazy. I just turned on these two incubators full time, plugged them into the main grid, just so that we had some power draw to drain out all that excess hydrogen. But now, now we can actually run a bunch of incubators pretty much full time. This whole place here is about to become incubator central. Uh, assuming we can get ourselves our hands on enough copper to make them all. Uh, excavation time, methinks. This year is where we're going to start expanding our uh, incubations. We, I realize we're going to need an awful lot more incubators if we want to get enough meat in time. We can't just let the eggs hatch, hatch naturally. That will take too long. So we've got to run about 20, maybe 30 incubators total. And we don't have that many. We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We've got 12 incubators so far. We're probably going to need about another 18. Um... Yeah, we could fit a bunch of them over here, and then maybe go up a level, or down a level, or we'll, we'll just keep throwing them in wherever we can. It's going to be problematic. Also, guys, someone's going to have to mop up that junk. So you don't need to mop up that, that's going to drop in a minute. Ooh, actually, yeah, don't maybe take out that bottom chunk. If we take out that bottom chunk, all that water escapes. We want to make this, you know, quick and dirty. At the same time down here, hmm, that hydrogen is starting to be burned off. I really should have put in some sort of system to burn this off automatically, but yeah, my bad. We can run that hydrogen or the excess hydrogen up there and into this tank. That might be an idea. That would actually... Hmm. Actually, I think we definitely will. I've already started putting in the bricks so that we can run that up there. Well, our dupes are busy, well, trying to make that happen at some point. Some point, guys, seriously. Uh, we want to choose a blueprint. Hmm. Let me see. I'm not looking the like of any of those. Loud sleeper would just mean we'd have to give them their own special room. I'm not really that bothered. I mean, eh. they actually do have a lot of research to make them very fast at learning. No, 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 no. Just grab the suit. There'll be better dupes along, plus we don't need them just yet. Oh, and I should really find a way to get rid of all that bleach stone. I've been letting it off gas for a while now because I was just too lazy. Oh, also, yes, uh, maybe some, get rid of some more of that ice down there. Uh, actually, wait, no, don't put it out there, or they'll have to actually step in the water. I know at some point I'm going to have to top up that tank, but I was thinking we could take water from here and just sort of feed it in directly. That shouldn't be too hard, actually. And if we do it that way, we'll actually be taking the water directly from this tank and technically feeding it in there. Oh, I should really go over this whole system, because it's kind of, um, not super obvious. And why is there no water coming from there? We have a broken power wire. Well, that's awkward. Ah, uh, right. So the water comes from here. It would if the power wire wasn't broken. Uh, it comes in across here and gets fed into this water tank. This water tank then feeds the water up here into the electrolyzer. Now, one thing to remember is this electrolyzer should be running at all times. So it should be consuming two kilos of water per second. And the way it's fed on here is the to toilets get priority. So those toilets will always have two kilos of free pressure for them to push through all the time, which means the toilets should never back up, which is very important. Now, all the water that gets filtered will go up to here and then get turned into hydrogen and oxygen. And the hydrogen ends up floating to the top. The oxygen ends up getting forced at the bottom and then just destroyed in the vacuum of space. But what this means is it shouldn't overpressurize. So as you can see, it's just constantly running flat out. Oh, max pressure there. How about you? Hmm. You know, what we could do, we could actually delete some of these backing tiles if we wanted to. But the theory is, I'll delete some backing tiles and maybe tweak this a bit. We don't need any gas pumps to actually extract the oxygen. Down here, we need to put in gas pumps to extract the oxygen, but we want one kilo pipe. This is actually about 1.6, 1.7 kilos of oxygen it produces. So the more oxygen we extract, the more hydrogen we'll be left with. Because for every piece of oxygen, you get a piece of hydrogen. All of this hydrogen we can then turn directly into power over here in these generators, which is going to help us achieve the super sustainable achievement. Uh, or, yeah, super sustainable down here. This requires a lot of power. So what we're doing here is we have a gas reservoir hooked up. If we don't need to burn it off, it gets stored in the gas reservoir until the gas reservoir gets to 90%, at which point it will send an automation signal over here telling all the hydrogen generators to turn on and just start burning that hydrogen off. Just get rid of it, 
We don't want it. We just want the power burned. Even if we just burn the power for no reason, it still counts towards super sustainable, which I know seems like a contradiction in terms. It's the same as carnivore. If carnivore, if someone has a food binge and eats a whole bunch of food they don't need, still counts, uh, we may end up having to use that trick. All right, so that is why that system was built out in the vacuum of space. If we built it, say, in here and then tried to open it up to space, there wouldn't be enough gas flow to keep these things from overpressurizing, uh, which reminds me I really need to do some trimming on those edge pieces. But at the same point, I'm thinking, hmm, we might be able to stick in a gas pump. We should maybe stick in a gas pump there and use that to help oxygenate our base. If we're going to be hiring a couple of more dupes in the near future, we can hire a couple to uh, help with our consumption problems. Our consumption problems being we don't have enough mouths maybe to eat all the food we're planning on having. That's a lot of fry eggs. That, that makes me happy. All right, let's see if we can't get a few more incubators in. This is taking its sweet time, but I, I do keep putting in little construction projects on the side. Uh, for example, I'm extending our oxygen line up here so that we've uh, got a little bit more oxygen being dumped off on the top half of our base. Mainly yeah, because the oxygen pressure in here is a little bit low and it was affecting our dupes' mood, which meant they were going to end up on the massage tables if I wasn't careful. So there's method to the madness, as well as that we're going to stick in an automated disp automatic dispenser here. We need a way to start sweeping the eggs out of here, and we literally can't afford to build the automation. Uh, by that I mean, if we want to build, say, the shipping here, we would need a conveyor loader in every room. That's 200 metal. And then we need 200 metal for the... 200 refined metal for the auto sweepers. That's 400 per ranch. That's 4, 8, 12, 16. That's 1.6 tons of refined aluminum. I'd prefer to put that into more incubators. So instead, we're going to be manually sweeping out the eggs. Yep. Yep, that's going to be so much fun, but hey, needs must as the devil drives, and the devil is like, hey, if you want that achievement, you're going to have to work for it. So, carnivore, yes, very hard, it seems, especially if you're not prepared for it. Egg-wise, down here, we have a lot of fry eggs. We have a lot, a lot of fry eggs. They're going to help out an awful, awful lot, I'm thinking. Uh, at the same time, our, uh, our other colony over here has been... Uh, well, they've been slowly culling their local population. What are you up to? You've got 4,000 calories of barbecue and 3.2 of meat. So that means more barbecue. Perfect. I'll make nice snacks for you. And uh, at the same time, they have been dropping over the occasional lump of copper when they've got time. So we're getting copper over ore over here, which we are then smashing up. Uh, you know, just make that a forever for now. Just so that we have more raw materials to make, well more incubators so that we can hatch more hatches and you need to like put in some mesh tiles there that'll allow the water to drop down and once the water drops down we'll be able to well have people running through there without getting debuffs all the time uh you can put that up to there i think it's good we don't need to go any further than that and we'll make that one a priority six as well just get that done and it will make working around here an awful lot simpler all right that's two more incubators queued up and we've also queued up this overflow pipe. This is for in case the hydrogen tries to back up here again. In fact, I'm thinking once this is done, we'll just stick in a, uh, a power transformer up here, and we'll make sure our entire main grid is fed off this. Uh, because if we're con consolidating all of our hydrogen in one place, it just makes sense to have all of our power coming from one place. They can actually churn out an awful lot of power here. Oh, we've actually hit... Well, we actually have. We've backed up all the way in the tank. So they're burning off power now for no reason. Excellent. That's uh, that's actually kind of good news, to be honest, for us. Finally, some of our hard work has come to fruition. Paku, that's one, two, three, that's four. Yes, excellent. We shall take you all. All shall be added to our stomachs. Uh, over on Contrilia, over here, these two dupes, they've got, uh, they've got some barbecue. We're slowly but surely culling all of the meat-based population around here. Um, oh, that reminds me. Yes, literally fish in a barrel. Millington is having a great time. That might explain why Millington is the one getting hurt. I presume they're the one doing all of the uh, hurting of things, which is why they're on 98 health. Yep, never mind. That's uh, a whole bunch of Paku fillets, and we're going to cook all of those up. Let me double check something here under consumables. I want to make sure no one's consuming any raw meat. It better be all cooked. Yeah, no one's going the sushi diet way. It's all got to be cooked fish. Gives us more calories. Perfect. All right, we'll leave them to that. And at the same time, we're, well, we're expanding at our power grid. This powers this section here, which gives us our hydrogen. This one down here is going to come down and power all of these incubators. So no one has to run on this wheel anymore. Uh, this over here is going to power these incubators over here. And then we're going to put in another power transformer. And that's going to power the main grid as well. So this should stop anyone having to run on a generator ever again. Or, like, almost ever again. And there we go. 
power wire is all the way down to here and hooked up so that battery is full. Now what we could do is remove that battery, but mm, I don't think we need to. There should be no danger of overload on this wire with the way we've got it set up. Plus, actually, how much power is that whole thing drawing? 240 watts a piece, so it takes four of these to basically max out a line. Yeah, we'll never end up with more than four of them on at the same time, even if we have messed up timer sensors somewhere. Oop, hatching egg. We'll give it that one. I don't even know where it was. Oh, there it is. We can also sweep them into that automatic dispenser. All right, from now on then, what are you at? You are at five of seven critters and you're at five of seven critters. The next two critters that hatch will go into here and here respectively. And then after that, every critter that hatches after that will go straight into our bellies. Uh, get... What the... What's going on there? There is something inside that tower. There's a shine bug. Um, you know what? I don't care. The shine bugs can go. I've had enough of them. Uh, they just they keep causing everyone to stop and go, ow, every time they run into one. If we need them later, I'll kick myself. But for now, carnivore is the number one priority. Hey, someone, someone want to get around to cooking that Paku fillet, guys? Seriously. Okay, we've almost got uh, the gas piping finished there. Blueprint rise. Hmm. I think we should probably take someone just so that we can increase calorie consumption. And we do have someone with bottomless stomach and machinery, but this may be the best machinist I've ever seen. That's 13 in machinery plus grease monkey for a plus three. That's a plus 16. I don't think it's actually worth it to have a plus 16 machinist, but uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take this one, especially with the bottomless stomach and it coming up on 20 cycles. Please welcome Chris Cullen to the team. They are a very hungry grease monkey. Okay, uh, do we have a bed for you? Yes. Do we have a dining table for you? Yes. Do we have a schedule for you? I've moved almost everyone out of this top schedule. I really should move the other two, but Alex and Mellington are kind of vital for what we're doing right now, so we're going to let them do what they're doing on their current schedule. But uh, Chris is down here on this newest one, which means the first thing they're going to do is take some downtime and go straight to bed. Welcome to the team, buddy. Just to, you know, make yourself right at home. Oh. Priorities and skills should probably look into that. That would be a good idea. Well, we already have an experienced mechatronics engineer, so for now I'm thinking improved carry is where you're going to be at. And there you go. But at the same time, under priorities, you're going to be our build digger. Um, yeah, you're going to go building and digging. We don't really care if you do offer... Nope. Nope, 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 nope. We'll just use them as build digging for now. They can help uh, supplement our current team. All right, we're in cycle 80, and, uh, yeah, I'm definitely coming up on the time, and what have we got on carnivore? We have 88,000 calories down, which means we need to consume 312,000. My calculator tells me that means we need to consume 15.6 thousand calories of meat per cycle. Uh, luckily, we do have 10 duplicates, so in theory, we could consume 20,000 calories of meat per cycle. Uh, unfortunately, we've also hit oxygen cap. Uh, this thing only provides a kilo of oxygen, and it's providing all of our oxygen needs, including the other planet. So I'm thinking we can stick a gas pump right about there, maybe. And we can start siphoning some of that uh, free oxygen that we're dumping into the background of space. Uh, the reason we didn't use gas pumps to extract this oxygen, that would cost power. Each one of those gas pumps in there costs 240 watts. So if we stuck into gas pumps, we'd get less power out of the whole system. Plus, we'd be spending more power by spending an extra, what, 500 watts almost? Not really worth the effort. This just is uh, nice because we have such a huge amount of water coming in. For example, we've got that polluted water vent and that cool slush geyser. Both of which are dormant right now, but that, that shouldn't matter. This thing only consumes about two kilos of water per second. But we're going to end up with this providing us with all of our oxygen, all of our power, and probably all of our food when the time comes. I'm going to start phasing out these crops here as well. We don't really need them anymore, and I'd prefer to have extra labor to get jobs done around the place. And we'll probably get carnivore. Probably. I mean, maybe? We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck.